Okay, so I'm actually pre-recording this and this is reading Rehabilitate, Rewire, Recover. I'm on page 177. So reading a page 177 onwards. Sorry, this isn't a live one, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So this chapter talks about mental hunger. We talked about physical hunger in the last one. Mental hunger is the title, is the heading. When I refer to mental hunger, I'm referring to the constant nagging thoughts around food and sometimes exercise or forms of restriction too. In a what way, my brain obsessed about exercise and restriction because that would allow me to fantasize about food and eating and planning to eat. Mental hunger is the focus on food that meant I spent hours a day flicking through cookbooks, watching cooking films. Mental hunger was me daydreaming of all the things I wanted to eat but never would. Mental hunger was even me planning on running the next morning so it would be allowed to eat breakfast after. Mental hunger was me thinking about avoiding eating. There was barely a moment in my day when my mum was not planning what to eat, what not to eat, or what, when I was allowed to eat. It was torturous, tedious way to spend the day. My own thoughts would drive me to the point of hysterics some evenings. No, literally, I actually would cry. But all the crying and pleading in the world would not make them stop. I'll talk about that a little bit because it really was incessant, my mental hunger. It just wouldn't stop and it would get worse at night. I'd be lying there in bed and my brain would just be going over everything that I'd eaten that day, everything I'd done that day, everything I planned to eat the next day, which was, by the way, the same. It's not like it changed much, but it was so boring. That's what drove me mad. It was so fucking boring. And um, because I had insomnia when I had an eating disorder, I wasn't really sleeping. And so I was just lying there, bored to tears yeah actual tears i would actually cry because i was that bored with my own thoughts anyway so that was my mental hunger for you it was a huge motivator for me to actually get myself recovery okay so mental hunger can be exhausting that's what i put the nagging prodding relentless thoughts of food were the ultimate cruelty for a person who could not eat I honestly think that for me, the mental hunger was the most painful part of my illness. The thoughts never let me be, and the sleepless nights seem endless. I don't even think I would have minded the insomnia as much had I been able to entertain myself with more interesting thoughts than food. But my brain had no interest in allowing me to contemplate any t anything other than the food that I wouldn't eat. Understanding mental hunger is often a real aha moment for people in recovery. When you click that all this food thinking is your brain trying to communicate hunger to you, you realise the extent of your malnutrition. You are really hungry. Mental hunger cues count as hunger. This is a heading. Most of us tend to discount mental hunger as if it's not valid physical hunger as physical hunger. I know I did. It didn't occur to me that I was thinking about food the whole time because I was hungry. I had little in the way of stomach growling or physical hunger pangs, and I didn't understand that my brain's inability to think of much other than food should be interpreted as a cue to eat. Nothing that your body does is free. Physical hunger cues require a physical contraction of the stomach muscles, so... Delivering a physical hunger cue has an energetic cost to the body. I imagine that mental hunger, on the other hand, thinking, is cheaper. When we are malnourished, the body is signalling to the brain that more food is needed. When incoming energy is so low that resources have to be sternly economised, mental hunger is your brain telling you that you need to eat. Hunger is defined as a craving or need for food, or an uneasy sensation occasioned by the lack of food. Mental hunger is both of these. Sure, there may be no physical signals, but it certainly is a craving and definitely uneasy. Mental hunger counts as hunger. If you're thinking about food, your body wants food. This terrifies many people in recovery, as they say, but I'm thinking about food all the time. Surely I don't have to eat all the time. Yeah, you do. So be it. If you're thinking about food, you need to eat food. Unrestricted eating means just this, that you respond to mental hunger. As you move into energy balance, the mental hunger will lessen. Your desire to eat all the time should decrease. When your brain and body are in a state of energy balance, the signals that your brain is giving you to eat all the time will no longer be required. Your brain will stop thinking about food all the time when you are no longer in energy deficit. Trust your body, it knows what you need. Your brain isn't making you hyper-focused on food for kicks and giggles. Mental hunger is there because you're in a state of malnutrition. Your body is screaming at you for food. Trust it and listen. 
This can be a bit of a wake-up call for many people who are apparently weight restored, that's in inverted commas, but you still have mental hunger and all the mental state indications that they are still in a weight suppressed state. Presence of mental hunger indicates that you are either still in energy deficit or that you are still restricting food or both. And while you may not be restricting in caloric terms, you may be adhering to orthorexic rules. Then you are restricting in other ways and your brain knows it. Mental hunger and unrestricted eating. That's the heading. When I talk about unrestricted eating, I'm not only talking about eating, restricting in response to physical hunger. I'm referring to listening to and eating in response to mental hunger too. Due to an early satiation and digestive tract slowing, most of us feel physically full quite fast when we're malnourished. And if you were to only eat to physical hunger, you would likely eat, unlikely eat enough to nutritionally rehabilitate. I've yet to meet a person with anorexia who can honestly say they don't have any mental hunger at all. Many people can successfully ignore or suppress it, but that's not the same as it not being there. If you are accountable about responding to mental hunger, you will eat enough food to nutritionally rehabilitate. That is the point of it being there in the first place. And yes, you are thinking about food the whole time. That means your body wants to eat food the whole time, really. All you have to do is actually eat the food, oh, and not judge it. The brain will obsess about what it wants, but can't have. Picture a person alone in the desert, let's call her Jodie. No, I don't actually really know any Jodies, interestingly. Jodie is dying of thirst. Jodie's mind is overrun by thoughts of water. Jodie dreams about water. Jodie sees mirages of water. Jodie's brain would be singularly focused on water and not interested in much else. This is your brain on restriction. Jodie in the desert on finding water would go wild. She would drink it and drink it and not want to do anything other than, not be, than be near that water for a while. She had a little honeymoon period of that oasis where all she wanted to do was lie next to it and take sips every now and then. However, if you put Jodie in a house where the water was on tap, over time she'd cease to obsess about water because water was no longer scarce. And when Jodie knows that water is in the tap and there for whenever she wants it, she would relax about it. Jodie's brain would switch away from obsessing about water and onto other things like kittens and NASCAR. When we restrict food, we turn food into a scarce commodity as far as our brains are concerned. If we stop restricting and start allowing ourselves to eat what we want, sure, we may consume a lot of that previously forbidden food in the short run, but in the long run, it loses its value. That was like me with carrot cake. I love carrot cake. I didn't eat carrot cake for 12 years. I was obsessed with the thought of eating carrot cake. When I did allow myself to eat carrot cake again, I wanted the whole cake, not just a slice. However, over time when I told myself I was allowed as much carrot cake as I wanted, the urge to eat massive amounts of it decreased. Now, I can buy a carrot cake and have it in the fridge and it doesn't burn a hole in my head like it used to. The mental hunger for it's gone. I can have it whenever I like. My brain doesn't have to keep telling me to eat it out of fear of scarcity. Mental hunger hurts. That's a heading. It feels wrong to admit this as I should have been more concerned about the physical repercussions of being so underweight. But I will say it anyway, if it were not for the relentless mental hunger, and I'm not sure I would have been motivated to recover, it drove me insane. Constantly thinking about food, building sandwiches in my head that I would never eat, going to imaginary parties and eating birthday cake, thoughts of hot chocolate with cream and marshmallows in daydreams that felt as realistic as the concept of Lapland that I would drink them in. And this was what got me in the end. I was driven to recovery by the mental hunger. This is a quote. Mental hunger is a kind of torture that's difficult to describe. It's unrelenting and it drives you completely insane. You truly feel as if you're losing your mind. The only option you have is to eat, but you don't want to. And if you give in and eat, then you open the floodgates and you cannot stop until there's nothing left to eat. The torture doesn't end there because now you have to purge and this is non-negotiable. And even after you've purged, you still have to go for that run and you don't want to stop running and you can't stop. And then you restrict again and then you're right back where you started. It's a living hell. And that's Elsie, who is now in recovery from anorexia. Due to anosognosa and the lack of egregious physical symptoms, many of us feel like we're getting by okay. Despite all of this, at some point, most of us are driven to seek recovery due to this unrelenting mental hunger that drives us mad. Your brain is allocating your attention to food, and sometimes this is the only persistent indicator that we have that we are unwell. Bottom line, if you're thinking about food, you're hungry. I think that's a good place to end this one.